Hey there, so in today's episode we are going to be talking about fog in here, what you can see in here. This is like a volumetric fog, but it's based on a material. Uh, there are animated noises everywhere. You can change the speed, you can change the direction. Um, and, and even it casts shadows on the fog itself. So if you, for example, come here, you can see the shadow of, a, of the character in the fog. Which is pretty cool. Um, it reacts to all the objects, to all the shadows. It's just pretty cool. So let's get started. First of all, this is um, created by this guy. So if you want to know more about all the concept, all the logic behind the whole thing, you can just go ahead into his channel. And I am going to use this comment as well these are two console commands to change the quality if you are having some performance issues you can lower the quality if you feel like you can go even further and um you still have a lot of budget to uh for the performance so you can just go ahead and have something more with higher quality so let's get started First of all, you just need to right click and create a new material, name it something, and then you have to just come here in the visual effects, exponential height fog, drag it into your scene. I've already added one, so I'm not gonna do that again. I actually did, but anyway, and then you click on it, you go all the way up up to volumetric fog make sure that's on it's already turned off by default but you can just turn it on uh, with scattering distribution the higher value you go you'll get a little bit of a better quality so i'd suggest go if you have the budget go so to something like one but the guy just spe specifically said that 0.6 is good to go and then um this is the material we've created so let's go ahead into it the first thing you have to do is to go to the material domain make sure it's set on volume and it's additive and you know what we can actually create the whole material material together so you don't get confused over it because you know this is just a little bit complicated so the first two things that you need to do are local position local position and object local bounds is this one and then um, from the local position we need to subtract these two together and then we can divide this also we need a mask so just type in mask component mask and this is going to be rng which is the default value and then we have to divide it by 100 which is well the guy specifically said that this is because the unreal engine unreal engine unit value is centimeters so we need a hundred centimeters um and then what we can do is go into the mask it must be B so you need to have B selected and then hold M on your keyboard multiply and then hold 1 on your keyboard type in 1.5 this is the flatness of the material I didn't change it this is the default value though um, and then Okay, so let's leave it like that and go on, on to the other things. So mask, divide, we are right here. So let's multiply and have a parameter in here after the divide. Multiply, hold S on your keyboard and this is going to be the tiling, which is going to be 1 by default. Um, and then we don't do that right now. Our wind spin 
a time and add okay so wind spin multiply by wind direction hold s on your keyboard wind speed <laughs> which is gonna be something really low and then multiply it by wind direction hold two on your keyboard and give it a direction and then it's going to go get multiplied by time and then add it by something else. So M on your keyboard, hold it, and then time. And then add by what we have right here. Cool, right? It's getting there. And then we have a texture sample, which in our case, just a noise. So let me show you texture sample. So if you type in noise, you have the Perlin noise. Just use that. It works just fine. You can go ahead and create some other noises or download some other noise textures from other sample content projects or whatever. But this one works just fine. Not just fine. It's not the best, but it works. And then uh, we are going to be using the red vet, um, channel to alert. So hold L on your keyboard. This one is going to be zero. And then the alpha is going to go into this one. This is the flatness. Remember? Flatness. Actually, yeah. Okay, sat saturate minus one. Sat saturate and one minus okay just reverse it uh, and then another layer hold l this is going to be going to alpha and then we need more space for ourselves okay so let's move on to the next part which in our case is going to be this part here right here Okay, multiple, let's multiply the wind direction by minus 1. This is the wind direction. Um, hold M. Minus 1. It's just to add some different variation. This one already works. This one right here. Uh, but this one's like the same texture with different tiling and different wind direction. So if this one's going to go this way the this one is gonna go the other way the opposite way it's just that so multiply it by a speed you can even change the speed later on to hold one and then again it needs a time as well so hold m and then time time is just to make sure that some event tick is working so the animation is just moving forward and it's not stopping and we can add it by the tiling we have right now which is gonna be probably three is fine oh i've defaulted to 15 but 15 is just a lot so we don't really need that uh, it's gonna go all the way to down there Mm, to oh what was it uh, uh what they do okay so hold m and then this one's gonna go here and this one's gonna go to the hundred centimeters okay and then we need a texture sample again we can actually copy and paste this one because we're using the same texture all over the, again. And then this one's gonna go into the layer that we have created. Yeah. And the A value is zero in both cases. Uh, and this is probably it. This is gonna go into the extension. We need to multiply it by something. So the guy's default value is five, but let me show you five is just a little bit too much. Oh, and I am actually using a subtract node. This is something I have added myself. 
something like 0.7 um, to make sure so if you start preview right now it looks like this but if you start previewing this one it's more defined you know so you can is more easily see all the clouds moving around and all the places that don't have clouds you know okay so I wanted to show you what five looks like fives like this it's just it's not too much but it's not something that you'd see in a real world or probably what you're gonna do is maybe just go ahead and lower the scale and maybe you can use the use it like this oh it looks nice actually yeah you can use it like this if you are going to use five as a value in there but in my case I want it to be two okay so this one right here that we've created together goes into the extension the no uh, the one right here for the albedo though we can either I mean use a normal color just hold three on your keyboard and give it a color or if you want it to be more defined if you want more details you can just go ahead and create this one right here so let's create that together so coming off the lerp goes into the subtract it actually gets subtracted by something point one no it hold one on your keyboard type in point one and then max it to point point one point zero and then smooth step it with the subtract to one smooth step subtract to one and then the value will be oh the flatten value okay this one right here And then you can lerp it between two colors. Oh, let me just, oh no, let's create it. Hold L on your keyboard, this is gonna be the alpha, and hold three on your keyboard, hold three again, this one goes right here, this one's right here, and then the color should be blue, and then, oh, my cat's meowing to me. Okay. Um, so this is and this one right here goes into the albedo to here so let me change the color in here to show exactly what I've done okay and hit apply to see what we are going to get and let it compile it actually compiled pretty well so this is what we're gonna get but I guess we need more opacity into it so let's go ahead and use the 5 value let it compile and we have something that looks like <laughs> it's weird <laughs> it is so weird but anyway it's like a toxic gas or something but if you want to create a toxic gas somewhere this is the way to go actually but yeah and yeah this is what we have right now and it reacts to the light which is pretty gorgeous spectacular mm. And if we change the color to, I know, yellow, 
it's gonna look like I guess some other toxic gas yeah it, this this is actually a toxic gas I feel it in my lungs too <laughs> and yeah this is it and if you want to change the speed you can do so by probably doing um I just made the value a little bit higher so you can easily see the animation going around so you can see what's happening right here but I mean I believe it's a little bit too much it's as if there's a war going on around here I don't want that I want something more atmospheric but if you want something like a little bit more toxic a little bit more action you can change the direction you can change the speed as well um and the other thing i wanted to tell you where the tease do a little bit about it r dot volumetric file dot grid pixel size and a little bit number after it lowers better quality but more expensive uh and this one r dot volumetric file dot grid size z uh higher is better quality but more expensive so let's actually try them out. Grid pixel size. So bring up the console command and maybe two. Oh, it's just not even sixty four. Oof, it was too much. But look how bad it got. The quality is just the worst. But at least you have some control over it. Uh, 32. Mm, not bad. Not bad at all. But probably we want something like 16. Or 8. I guess 8 is the default value. Or 4. Well, I'd go ahead with the 8 value, it's not as bad and doesn't really look bad, but it's, it's perf more performant that, than the other one. And also the other one, r.volumetricfog.grid size, higher is better quality but more expensive, let's copy it. So if we're going to use a 128... Mm, didn't really change much. 5.12. Oh, it's much better now. Look at that. It's much better. 1.10.24. Oh, it's starting to get laggy. But the quality is just something else. Quality is too much. So I would say 128 is not bad at all because we're working on a game and the game should be performant. People should be able to use the game on their devices and they don't really want something that's laggy for no reason. So I would say 128 is the way to go. And um, this was pretty much it. I hope you liked it and if you did, please hit that like button. Have a great day. Bye.